Now we're gonna make Twix ice cream, Twix candy bar, and I will give you the recipe in a second. That's right. I don't use egg products for the most part. There's as many people as there are with uh, nut allergies. There's people with uh, egg allergies. And it, it's just too limiting for me. You know, with the nut, I can say, you know, I'm sorry you can't eat this flavor, but you still have all these. Right. But with, when you go putting the egg yolk in, uh, that runs into trouble. Uh, what Jeff was talking about was a product made by a company called Paw Petty out of New Jersey, frozen pasteurized egg yolks. It's been around for about 20 years. And you can add it to a mix, but uh, if you've got a health department who's uh, a stickler, they're going to say, no, you would have to repasteurize in order to add that to it. Uh, I just find eggs frightening uh, overall uh, because of the high risk of salmonella. There's going to not be any problem with the pasteurized frozen eggs, but you are going to have trouble with customers you know, when they see egg yolk in there. And if they get so much as a, a, a burp, they're going to come back and say, oh, it was the egg yolk. He poisoned me. You know, so sometimes you just got to stay away from products by popular demand. So I've got my uh, six quarts of mix here. Oh, and I got to give you the recipe. I made sure the gate was closed. Here's someone behind me. Okay. Uh, here's the recipe. I'll have you pass those out. So it's pretty simple. It's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, it's kind of a, it's just a fun ice cream because it has so many different flavors in it. The Twix candy bars, the reason I picked them is um, my wife's uh, nephew likes Twix candy, and uh, he's helping us uh, with some projects, so I said I'd make him Twix candy ice cream. Um, I've also got uh, Smucker's Caramel. I think Smucker's is one of the best brands around. Um, it's usually all natural and very good stuff. And then I'm going to use some uh, Hershey's chocolate syrup and some vanilla extract. So I like to use vanilla in almost everything, unless the flavor is overpoweringly something else. An example would be at Christmas I make candy cane ice cream. And um, candy cane is so overpowering that uh, you know, putting in vanilla or anything else, you're never going to notice it. So I don't use it. Um, let's see. I'm looking for something I can measure with. If anybody sees something, let me know. Otherwise, I'll wing it. Uh, anybody see the? There we go. Okay. Good. So I'm going to use five ounces of vanilla. Vanilla is a product that the price goes up and down. Um, way back when, maybe eight years ago, there was a monsoon that uh, basically wiped out all the vanilla crop and the price went through the roof, supply and demand, very little supply, same old demand. And the price went very high, and so the uh, people who were growing the vanilla saw that and said, you know what, we can charge these Americans anything we want, and they're going to pay for it. So the next year, the price was still very high, even though it was a bumper crop. The vanilla companies, friends of mine, went around and said, we want you to use an artificial product this year, Vanillin. You know, it's good. Uh, but it's not vanilla, because we've got to get these prices down. Otherwise, we're going to be paying $200, $240 a gallon for something that's usually $40. So we pretty much boycotted it across the United States, and guess what? Next year, it dropped to $40. It, it worked. Sometimes it does. So the vanilla is in there, and the mix, and I'm going to start this up. I'm going to run this at super premium, which is going to be... 170 RPMs, a little lower than full speed, 165. Turn on the refrigeration, and I'm running. Now I'm going to throw in my Twix candies. Now this is what you can't do in any other machine. You'll void your warranty if uh, you go trying to put something that big and that hard into the uh, ice cream. You know, it'll ruin your other machine. 
but the Emory Thompson, we're designed to do it. I teach at Penn State, and um, I do an ice cream like this or a banana when I do because everybody else is adding stuff at the end and it just it kills them when I'm just pouring stuff away, you know, having a great time. And some Hershey's. Let's see, this is 12 ounces. I don't think that's gonna pour. Is that gonna pour? No. Now, this is a made up recipe. What I did is I looked at the, at, I looked, <laughs> I looked at the Twix candy bars and saw what was in them, caramel and chocolate, and I said, okay, fine, that's what I'll do. I'll add caramel and chocolate. Not all my recipes come out great. I love uh, bananas and I love coffee ice cream. I make the world's greatest coffee ice cream. I use uh, Taster's Choice freeze-dried crystals. I'm a coffee snob. I'm an absolute snob when it comes to coffee. You know, I've got, I've got the, every morning the very best in the world, the most exotic. But when it comes to making coffee ice cream, nothing works better than Taster's Choice. Do I have any here? No. Um, and um, I use the regular Tracer, Taster's Choice. The freeze-dried crystals will dissolve 99% which means that every once in a while you get a little crunch of uh, undissolved uh, uh, crystal in your ice cream, but that tells you it's homemade. Also, when you're using the jar, you gotta watch out, there's a 25 cent off coupon, and that's gone into the ice cream a lot, too. So I'm making this stuff, and my sister moves down from uh, uh, Lake Forest, she and her husband moved down from Lake Forest, Illinois, and she's going rummaging through my freezer, she sees the coffee, and, and then she calls me and tells me I stole one. I said, yeah, that's fine. Don't eat it after uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, for some reason, she didn't listen to me, and at 10 o'clock at night, she ate uh, almost a whole quart of ice cream. Three days later, she comes into my house. Her eyes are down like this. I said, what happened to you? She said, I haven't, I haven't slept in two days because of that ice cream, so, because of the coffee in it, so, because I make it strong. So uh, I've now switched over to decaf taster's choice, which works great. But I guess that there's a point to the story. If you're gonna make a flavor, make it intense. Make it so people know what it is. If you're a tea drinker, you're not gonna buy my coffee ice cream because you like tea. You don't drink coffee. Yes, yeah, so if you're making hogwash ice cream, buy the best hogwash. Um, the coffee, coffee lovers are gonna buy coffee ice cream. I love coffee ice cream. So make it intense. Make it so that people know what it is. Uh, you buy Breyer's coffee ice cream, and we put them in business too. And it's so weak, you know, if it wasn't for the color, you wouldn't know that it was even Breyer's. I mean, that it was coffee. So the, the flavoring is, is the most important. Did you get those bets placed? Oh, I didn't see how you made that. Um, did you simply add Twix pieces to your machine? Yeah, we refrigerated them. Um, so that I'm they, just saying, you know. I know they'll come out hard. It's what it's it's being made for my nephew, and it's what he likes. Tomorrow, I'll show you how to make. Oh, real, I know he's going to grind them up. Real which is candy a different ice one. cream, so that the ice cream tastes like the candy. That's what you want. People come in all the time, and they say, like they see our Snickers ice cream, and say, is that vanilla or chocolate? No, it's Snickers ice cream. See, Jeff grinds them up which is fine, it works great for M&Ms. I want the pieces, I want the recognition because I don't have just the candy bars in there. I have a whole jar of chocolate and I have a whole jar of uh, caramel too. So I've got three flavors going on. Right, because... No. And you'll try it, you'll say, Jeff, you'll say, this is great. You know, this is a man who uh, would say, that's gonna be horrible, and then he tastes it and he calls me up a week later and says, you know, that's the best thing I ever ate. So I'm used to this. I mean, it's, it's yes. like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde working with them. Yes. If you use like Snickers or Twix, 
Ice cream? Two-fold answer. Yeah, I sell Bailey's ice cream. Now, I don't buy Bailey's Irish cream for it because I use two gallons in my uh, recipe. Too expensive. Bailey's is like $60 for a gallon. So I use St. Brennan's Irish cream. Now, I put up there Bailey's because everybody knows Bailey's. Now, the best thing in the world that would happen, let Bailey's sue me for that. Yeah. That would be the greatest because I grew up. Any press is good press. It's yes and no, depending on the company. The most classic case was um, uh, Oreo cookie. Um, everybody made Oreo cookie ice cream. This is back in the uh, early 70s. We all made Oreo cookie ice cream, and some middle management idiot from New Jersey uh... goes by dr mike's ice cream in secaucus a little hole in the wall who does a huge business he's on route three everybody's going eighty miles an hour to get to the uh... lincoln tunnel and uh... he's doing oreo cookie for the first time they came in and uh... hit him with a cease and desist you know we're gonna sue you for using our name and stuff like that and they were so intense about it that everybody called it cookies and cream ice cream which is a name that still sticks and I wrote to Nabisco, I said, you know, I don't know what's going on with you people, but you need new marketing people. You could have hundreds of thousands of my customers advertising your product in our stores. And it took them about 25 years to where they finally have now come out where they'll sell uh, uh, Oreo cookie pieces for use in ice cream. It's just broken up cookies. But it took them that long to figure out, oh, now, now it's please use our name. No, no, we don't want to use your name. It's, or it's cookies and cream. This is for my own personal consumption. Uh, if you're one store, you can get away with murder. If you're 100 stores, you probably have a legal case. So good it really answer. depends on good size. Answer. That's a good answer. And the smaller you are, the more you can get away with. Questions? See, it's quiet. Yes? So if you hear that machine making that banging noise, you need to turn the up on it? Is that no, no, it's just it's just a matter of what you're making. Uh, it, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, the only time it means something, if it was really loud, it would mean that you left the sugar out of the Italian ice, which which people do. Yeah. Or your fat or your sugar level is so incredibly low that it's too low for the machine. See, I, I'm dealing with a gentleman right now over in uh, Monaco. And uh, he just wrote me back a few minutes ago. I wrote him last night, and I said, you know, your recipe that works so well in your kitchen and won't translate up to my new machine that you just bought is because in your kitchen, your freezer to make the ice cream is taking 40 to 70 minutes to freeze it. It's so slow because it's so little refrigeration. It, it, it would freeze just plain water if, if you put in it uh, in, into uh, crystals. But when you freeze in eight minutes or less, you have in a commercial machine, you've got to have a properly balanced product. That's my problem with people making their own mix, is they do not have it in balance. I mean, I, I now ask people, because I'm tired of answering the question about making your own mix, I said, how much do you know about the difference between Jersey, Guernsey, and Holstein cows? And how much do you know about the difference between milk cream output percentage-wise in December as opposed to July? And they go, huh? And I said, exactly. That's why you need a dairy professional to put this blend together, because you don't know the difference between a Jersey and a Holstein. A dairy professional? Yes. Interesting. Uh, and they do. What do you do for a living? I'm a dairy professional. Do <laughs> you have any more mix? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yes. I, I just need another quart. Yeah, it's, it's in the fridge. Because you'll want to keep some of this. OK. Good. In the fridge again? Yeah. I'll get it if you want. I'm about to take this out. And you're going to eat your words. <laughs> All right, let's check it. Now, see how that cuts off nicely? Like a knife went through it. Ken, can you zoom in on this? What'd you say? Yeah, yeah. Okay, barely hear you. All right, we're turning off the refrigeration. We don't want it to get any colder. Um, I'm gonna get my spatula, and we're gonna open that up. Now, I'm gonna up the speed to help push it out the rest of the way. See how fast that comes out? <clears throat> that means I've got absolute consistency between the first scoop and the last. And in an example I use, it'll get me in trouble, they'll sue me someday. McDonald's, we all agree, is a lousy hamburger. 
but it's the same lousy hamburger in Brooksville, Florida, as it is in Moscow, as it is in uh, Dubai. No matter where you go, you know what you're going to get when you order a McDonald's hamburger. And we need that same consistency, only we want a good quality. If I go back to Jeff's place uh, a year from now, I want to taste his ice cream exactly like I remember it. It's got to be consistent. So look how fast we made a uh, three-gallon tub. Now, you're only going to leave about a pint in the machine coating all the parts. So if I then said, OK, I'm going to go to vanilla, which would be a mistake, I would have to rinse out the machine and I'd lose that pint. If I started with vanilla and then went to Twix and then went to M&M and then went to Oreo cookie, I wouldn't have to rinse out the machine because they're all in the same generic family. And I'm just going one batch after another. It would probably shut the machine down. Uh, the question was, what if I left it in for another three minutes? We have this machine set up to protect us against you. Uh, it's going to save itself. So if you overfreeze it, uh, the old machines would just go until everything locked up. The new machines, being uh, with the electronic control, are going to sense that you've gone off and you know, are having a long lunch and uh, have forgotten that you're making ice cream, and it'll shut itself down. At that point, you need to come back and open it up, take it all out, and start over. Because it was your mistake, not the machines. And, if, and with all the power from the back turning it, <clears throat> if you want it to turn against a solid mass, about 60 pounds of ice cream and a solid mass, you know, something's going to give. Why couldn't you use the same ice, let it thaw, and then use the same mix? Because it's got uh, air in it now. Uh, the industry calls that rerun and it will never be the same. You can't melt down ice cream and start over. You can do it with Italian ice, but why get into the bad habit? So come on up, and we'll try it. Jeff, you want to try some? Uh, no, thanks. Since I've never made it. <laughs> See, you hear? He's just stubborn. He's just stubborn. Can we use this? Oh, here, we'll both scoop. OK. There you go. Anyone wants a napkin, they're there. That looks a little bit runny, so you put that in the freezer, then it makes it like normal. It's not runny because it, it's not going to come out ready to go on a cone. Right. Otherwise, it wouldn't come out of the machine. Okay. It, would, it would be stuck in there. Girl!